Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Elisa Ruffin with Leading Educators and you are on the Grade 11 ELA Unit 6 Lesson Video Series. Today, we are in Week 7, Lesson 31. Yesterday, we continued our analysis of the craft and structure of the Telltale Heart. And you did so by skimming through the text again and responding to a couple of questions in a quick write and also in a closing activity. Today, you're going to get a few more questions that has you delving in a little bit deeper into the craft and structure of the text, looking at some very specific elements. You're going to respond to questions and your questions, and you're also going to create an alternate title of the text. But before we get started, a reminder to make sure that you're sharing your learning with a family member, caregiver, or friend, that you're completing the weekly fluency activities using a page from the text, and that you're doing an additional 20 minutes of reading from a text of your choice. As I mentioned yesterday, we also do our riddle of the day, and we've been doing that now consistently every lesson. Last week and the week prior, we did some Rebus puzzles, a break from our traditional routine, and looked at decoding some pictures. And so this week, we're doing a little spin, moving away from pictures, but going back to uh, singular words. Remember, we're doing word association, where I present you a list of three words, and you attempt to figure out what's the missing word that connects them all. So yesterday we had a really good one. Today, hopefully, now that you've experienced one, uh, you'll be very quick on the draw here. So again, gather all those people around that are typically involved in this part of the lesson, if that's become a thing for you. And if it's you taking on this singular challenge, I encourage you to clear your mind and get ready because here comes our three words. Glasses, screen, day. Glasses, screen, day. What's the missing word? Take a moment to think, discuss, discuss, confer. If you need additional time, this is the moment where you pause because I'm going to reveal the answer and I don't want to spoil it for you. So the answer today, the missing word association is sun. Sun. So let's take a look. Sunglasses, sunscreen, Sunday, right? So sun is our missing word association. Did you get it today, folks? All right, now that we've had some exercise with decoding and with making inferences and drawing conclusions, let's move on for today. Making sure that we have our resources, you need the Telltale Heart Text, your learning packet, week seven, lesson 31 note catcher, a pen or pencil, and a mobile device is optional in case you want to access the text digitally. A brief reminder, we're talking about here a text, The Telltale Heart, that is written by Edgar Allan Poe. It's a form of Gothic literature, again, focused on horror and dark themes and very much a psychological thriller as Poe was known for. Remember, it does connect to our essential question for the unit, what do stories reveal about the human condition? And specifically, this text really gets at what sinister parts of the human condition the Telltale Heart may reveal. So you wrestled with both of those questions already, which has allowed you to unlock further meaning in the text. And we're gonna move on today to do a little bit more. Your learning targets for today. I can explain how the author's use of the first person point of view helps develop the plot, characters, and themes of the story. I can describe the impact that the author's use of stream of consciousness in the story has on the reader. Our read, think, talk, write, closed routine is in full effect again today. You're gonna to do some skimming today, reviewing some of your previous annotations as well. And you're gonna think about the question, how are the thoughts running through the narrator's head different from what is actually happening around him? All right, so you may have noticed that already that there's a disconnect between what his perception is and what the reality is. So we're gonna look at that a little bit more today. And what is the impact of the difference between the narrator's thoughts and perceptions and reality on the reader? In your talk discussion today with your family member, caregiver, or friend, you're gonna talk about the following question. What role does tension play in creating suspense in the story? And you're gonna respond, uh, respond in your note catcher, but you've already talked a little bit about suspense. We did that last week, you really, thought about what suspense means and what that looks like. So you're going to draw on the things that you discussed last week and responded to last week to help you for today in that talk section. Then in your write section, you're going to provide examples from the text to support your answers uh, to the think section questions. 
And then in a close activity today, closing activity, you are going to give the story another title and then provide an explanation as to why you would call it this and record your response in the note catcher. So let's get going on our quick model today, shall we? Let's look at those think questions to make sure that you know exactly what they're asking of you and get you jump started on some thoughts related to the question. So let's start with how are the thoughts running through the narrator's head different from what is actually happening around him? So the key word here is different, all right? So what this means in this context is the question is asking me and it's saying that I need to compare and contrast. I can start by identifying places in the text where the narrator's thoughts and perceptions are directly parallel to the action surrounding him. So I wanna find a place in the text where the narrator is um, divulging or giving me insight into what he's thinking. And then also there's some descriptions happening around what's actually happening. So the reality and the narrator's thoughts are kind of in tandem. That's gonna help me do some clear comparisons. And then I'm gonna move on to talk about what is the impact of the difference between the narrator's thoughts and perceptions um, and reality on the reader. So I'm doing compare and contrast in one question. And then I'm gonna take that information and think about what is the impact or the effect of that difference or disparity between reality and perception regarding the narrator? What does that have on me as a reader, all right? I need to consider that the reader has insight. I have insight into what's going on around the narrator as well. Um, and I also know what's going on in his head because he's telling me. And so then after I do that, I need to think about what effect does having this full perspective have on me as the reader, right? So. I have some knowledge because I'm reading the story. I know what he's telling me and I am perceiving what's happening from a very different vantage point than he is. So when I take my perspective on the text and what the narrator is telling me, what is the impact of the disconnect between perception and reality? Okay. And what we know to be true. So that is how you approach that think section. And that's going to set you up for the right section. In actuality, the right section and the think section, you can do in tandem with one another because the right section will help you organize some of the thoughts that you have in that think section because it lays out very clearly for you this idea of compare and contrast. So you're going to compare and contrast the narrator's thoughts and perceptions to what is actually happening around him. And so you're going to cite examples from the text. So now that I'm thinking about it, the right section gives me a place to organize those thoughts. So an example I've already provided for you here. The clearest example is this idea of the beating heart. So at this point, you know, in the beginning, we know that the narrator is hearing the heartbeat of the old man. Now, that's what he's telling us. Can someone's heart beat that loud? That's a good question. Um, the other thing we need to think through is after the old man has already been taken care of, has already been killed, his heart is no longer beating. He's not living, right? We know that. We clearly know that. But we also know that the narrator still thinks he hears it, all right? So the narrator's thoughts, I think I hear the beating heart. Reality, the old man is dead, all right? So that's a really good example, really obvious one. I want you to find a couple more examples in the text where that disparity, discrepancy between perception and reality is happening, okay? The next part is the talk section. And so we're doing this a little bit out of order than what we've done previously, but that's because the thing and the, the think and the right sections are so closely related this time. The talk section focuses on this idea of tension, tension. What role does tension play in creating suspense in a story? And you can provide some specific examples. We have discussed tension several times so far in this text. Remember I asked you um, a few lessons ago, um, to think about how the author creates a sense of both curiosity and anxiety over what's going to happen next. So remember we talked about this idea of suspense makes you feel like I kind of want to know what happens next and at the same time like I don't know if I want to know what happens next. So curiosity and anxiety. All right. There's a tension between those two because they're opposing desires. They're, they're opposing views, curiosity and anxiety. And so those two opposing viewpoints create that tension. So what role does tension play in creating suspense in the story? Well, we've just kind of laid it out, haven't we, right? So go back to um, some of your lessons from last week, some of your annotations, and think through that idea of curiosity and anxiety put up against each other. And that's gonna help you really flesh out your response in that talk. 
And then finally, you're going to close. You're going to give the story another title. And then you're going to explain why you're going to call it that in the first place. So we know the original title is The Telltale Heart. We've got that title. Now it's your turn to come up with one. And then you're going to provide an explanation. So some places to start. One of the ways in which an author may generate a title uh, may come from a major action or event in the story. And you may have seen this again in other stories that you've read or movies that you've seen. Um, the title itself is a reflection of the major action or event in the story. So it gives you a clue. So that's one strategy for generating a new title. Another strategy is a line from the story. Sometimes it's a piece of dialogue or it may be something um, small and anecdotal mentioned by the, the narrator um, or whoever's writing the story. If you remember from everyday use, for example, uh, that terminology, that phrase was found in the story, right? As, re as it related to the use of the quilt. One of the characters spoke it. That's another source of inspiration that you can use for a new title of the story. Sometimes the title of the story is related to a character's name or a character quality or description or personality trait of the character, right? So the main character of the story, um, Rudy, for example, was, was a movie from a very long time ago. Um, Babe the Pig, <laughs> all right? You name it, all right? And so there have been um, Ali. Uh, so there have been other movies, stories, etc., that are written by about a specific person and it carries or bears that person's name. And then theme. Theme is often a source of inspiration for a story. So those are the four elements that you can use as jump off points or springboards for brainstorming a new title. And so you can choose from those four categories or something altogether different, but you can use one of those four categories as a springboard for you generating a sample list of titles land on one, and then provide an explanation as to why you chose it. Now that I've modeled all of the activities for you, it is your turn to read, think, talk, write. Remember that you are thinking through how the thoughts running through the narrator's head are different from what's actually happening around him. You're going to think about the impact of that discrepancy between the narrator's thoughts and reality have on the reader. You're going to have a conversation about tension and the role it plays in building suspense in the story with the family member, friend, or caregiver. And then you are going to provide examples from the text in the write section uh, to support your answers from the think section. And then finally, you're going to engage in that closing activity where you come up with a brand new title for the Telltale Heart. I know it's going to be great and creative. And so if you need a place to start, go back to those four categories and, and think through how that can help you come up with another title. As always, you can always pause and replay this video as many times as necessary if you need help or support. You can also reach out to a teacher using the information provided if you get stuck. Finally, always remember that when you've completed all the lesson activities for today, that you are sharing your learning with a family member, caregiver, or friend, and that's built into the lesson. So if you do that, then you are well on your way to checking that off your list. Make sure you're completing the weekly fluency activity using a page from the text and doing at least 20 minutes of additional reading from a text of your choice. So we've come to the end of another lesson. We are really motoring through them. I know that you are prepared to do these activities. I'll see you again next time.